everyone, my name is Jamila Prince and today we're going to talk about Project Minesweeper of CS50 AI. In this project, we're going to write an AI to play Minesweeper and the idea is that our AI will never lose. We're going to safely tell what are the cells that are safe and also mark what are the potential cells for being mine. And we're going to make our, our AI make the moves and win at the end. If you're interested in learning more about AI and this world of programming, you can check the description below where we have our waitlist for our next book camp of AI where you can learn all the fundamentals of programming and become prepared to work in this field. All right, so if you have any questions, send here on the comments and check the description. But well, without further ado, just to start explaining here, we're going to implement, uh, we have three parts of our code. So we're going to be working with this minesweeper.py. They already implemented this class minesweeper, which pretty much contain the representation of a game board. So we, our game board, we can think like this part in here where we have cells and each cell can contain or not a mine okay this minesweeper class is creating this game representation of what is a cell what is a mine the idea of a board so we won't need to change we're gonna make our work in the sentence class where we're gonna write some functions to be used by our AI and the part of the AI logic we're gonna write in this minesweeper AI okay for now for this sentence we need to write on those four functions so let's see what we have in our hands inside of this sentence class we have a init function which starts the main properties of our of our class and in this class we have two properties we have a set of cells so all the cells available and we have the variable count that tells us the number of those cells which are mine so what this means this variable count will be one of those numbers you are seeing here when I say that this cell has zero uh, mines. This means that the neighbors of the cell, uh, we have zero mines as neighbor of the cell. So if this here is zero and here is zero, we can say that here we don't have any, any mine, only a regular cell. But in here we have the number one. So this means that this has a mine, right? Because the neighbors in here are pointing to one mine. The other ones doesn't have any mine. So this tell, let us know that here we have a mine. So we're going to use those numbers to know how many mines we have around us so we can guide our AI to do the job. Okay. Besides that, we have this other two functions and we're going to focus on implementing this no mine. So let's take a look in here. The other parts we discuss in the future. Okay. So the function no mines should return a set of all the cells in self.cells that are known to be mines. So as I told you previously, if we want to know if a cell is a mine or not, we need to check this count in here. So if I say that count is zero, this means that all the neighbors, so all of those neighbors in here, they are, they are not mines as well. The same for the zero, the same for the zero. So the count is something we can secure. We can know that for sure we have, have only zero mines. So if the number of cells is equals the number of mines this means that we can return all the mines so if we say that zero cells has mines we can return those cells otherwise if we can't say for sure that the number of no mines is equals as the the number of cells remaining right there we should return an empty set because we don't know anything for sure and here we need to write things that we are a hundred percent sure okay so if the length of the cells available is equals to how many cells that we are counting of being mines this means that all those cells they are mines okay this makes sense and otherwise if we don't this if statement isn't true we're gonna return an empty set because we cannot say anything for sure all the cells that are mines so here we're being secure the next one we should return the set of all cells if self in self cells known to be safe so here it's kind of the other way around if count is zero we can say for sure that the other cells they are not mines so if self dot count is equal to zero we're going to return all the cells otherwise we're going to return an empty set because we cannot say anything for sure so we're being safe here good then in the next item we should let me double check in here we should first check to see if cell is one of the cells included in the sentence if cell is in the sentence the function should update the sentence so that cell is no longer in the sentence but still represents a logically correct sentence giving the cell is known to be mine giving that cell is known to be mine if is not in sentence then no action necessary 
So here we're gonna do a look in all of the cells that we have available and we are going to, let me see, we're doing the mark mine. We're gonna do a look in all the cells we have available. We're gonna remove this cell from our set of cells and we're gonna subtract by one. Okay, so this way we are removing that cell from our safety cells to play because if we know that it's a mine, we need to mark this as a mine. So we're gonna extract from our set of safe safe cells, we're gonna remove. And because we found a mine, we're gonna subtract the count variable because now that we find a mine, we just need to look for the others remaining. We don't need to look for that mine anymore. So this is pretty much what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do if cell in self.cells and take a look in here. We are receiving a cell to, to remove, saying that it's a mine. So if it is available cell, we're gonna go to our cells and we're gonna remove this one because we cannot say that safe anymore and we're gonna update our count to say okay we found one mine we don't need to worry about the following ones and the other one mark safe here if a cell let's read directly the comment we're gonna update internal knowledge representation giving the fact that cell is known to be safe so if we know that the cell is safe we're gonna remove as well i made a mistake when i was talking about that we want to secure only the safe cells but actually this self.cells in here are all the cells available that we don't know if it's a mine or a safe here we're still finding it out so once we find that a cell is a mine we're gonna remove from the set and update the count if we find out that a cell is safe we don't need to update the count but we're gonna remove from our safe cell from this undetermined cells in here because now we know it is a safe cell so i'm gonna do the change if cell in self.cells i just need to do the same self.cells.remove because now we can we can uh say something for sure that's why okay so these are the principles for our initial class now let's take a look at our minesweeper ai so now in our minds ai we have the same idea of creating a class and we have our init function in this init function we have some properties which are is the height of the board the width we're gonna keep track of how many moves we make made and we also have here a set of all cells that are known to be mine all the cells that are safely known to be safe and we have a list of knowledge that we can infer to so knowledge as they mention in here is a list of sentences that represents our ai knowledge base like the purpose of this week's concept so we're gonna start writing those type of information for example so e f and h they have here three minds around them and we're gonna start inferring those sentences so our ai with all of those sentences can understand okay in, in cell a we don't have any mind but in cell two we have and in cell three we might have as well so it's interesting because we're gonna add some se some sentences right there and our ai will have more knowledge to infer which cell contain or not a mine okay here they also have other functions that use mark mine mark say that uses the things we've implemented before and now our goal is to add this add knowledge so we're gonna receive a cell so we're gonna receive of a position of a cell so the the value i and j of this cell and we want to know the variable count so how many minds we have around this cell in particular that we're talking about then we are gonna call it when the mind super board tell us for a given safe cell so this function add knowledge will be called when the mind sweeper board tell us for a given safe cell so this will be a safe cell we need to say how many neighboring cells have minds in them so here this function should mark the cell as a move that has been made because we're gonna call this function once we made a move and also we need to mark the cell as safe because we are just gonna call this function when we do a safe move and in the future I talk about the other one so initially let's just start marking the cell as a move that has been made so we have here a item called moves made where we can set we can add this cell in our set of moves made so self dot moves made dot add and I want to add the cell and I also want to mark the cell as safe so I'm gonna call the function mark safe in here that I need to send the cell and update my knowledge base so self dot mark safe I think it's mark safe not mark safe move and I will call I'm gonna send here the cell 
Okay, then we need to add a new sentence to the AI's knowledge base based on the value of cell and count. So in order to do this, I want to do a loop first in all of my... And here they're also telling that mark any additional cells as safe or as mines if it can be concluded based on the AI's knowledge base and add any new sentence to the AI's knowledge base if they can be inferred from existing knowledge. So now we need to take a look at all the neighbors of this mine, of this cell that we we know it's safe and we're gonna start checking if we can infer other things so initially I'm gonna do a loop and I'm gonna check if the cell that I am right now exists if exists it exists fine then I want to check I want to keep track of how many mines I have around me and what are my neighbors so this will be our job I'm gonna create here a variable called neighbors that will be an empty set that I want to add all the neighbors of the cell that we are right now and I'm gonna say, create a variable no mines count because I want to know how many minds I have around me okay then I'm gonna do a loop for I in range and here I'm gonna use where I am in my cell so if I am in here I want to do a loop in this part sorry in this let's suppose I am letter A the first loop I'm doing a loop in all of my rows so I'm doing a loop in here this row this row and this row so to, to get the neighbors I just need one row above and one row after right and then I can see all my neighbors so this is the loop we are planning to do in here so for I in range cell on position zero which represents the, the value of i minus one and i want to go into cell on position zero plus two i know we would think that it's plus one but the range function the stop is not included that's why it's plus two so this way we're going to do a loop in those three rows which are the rows we are interested then we need to do the same idea but we need to do a loop for the columns so if i'm here for example on cell b i want to do a row a loop in this column this column and this one so we're going to do the same process for j in range cell one which represents the j minus one and i want to go to cell one plus two again because the stop position is not included then i want to do a loop i want to do my first check to see if i am not talking about the same cell i am so if i'm doing a loop and i am a i don't want to i just want to double check if i'm not talking about a again so if I, I'm gonna it's a tell ij is equals to our cell I want to continue I don't want to do anything I am not interested in talking about myself then we're gonna do another if statement to talk about the other the other cells that are inside of the boundaries so now we need to check if our loop is inside of the width and the height just to be certain so if zero minus equals i less than self dot height and zero less than or equals to j less than self dot width so if this happens i want to check if the cell that i'm looking for so if i am a and i'm looking at cell d i want to check if it is a mine if it is i want to keep track in my no mines count so if i and j in self dot mine so in our set of mines that we know that are mines if it is i want to increment my variable no mines count otherwise so if i and j not in self dot actually not in self dot say not not in self dot mines i want to check if the other cell is not a safe yet but it's not not either a mine so if it's undetermined yet so if it's not in safes I want to add in my neighbors set so I can work in the future. So I and J. Okay, so I will be feeding my neighbors with all the undetermined cells that are that are aren't mines or aren't safes yet. And I want to know how many no mines count I have because I need to do new inferences, new sentences to help my AI. That's why I'm gonna create this variable adjusted count where I'm gonna get how many the count for the cell minus the ones that I look already. So we're trying to update in here to know. And I'm gonna check if we have neighbors. If we have have neighbors I want to add in my knowledge base a sentence with the cells of my neighbors and the following minds that are left to be found okay so I'm gonna kind of continue upgrading updating my knowledge base so self the 